Hey, this is John with Two Moose Home Inspections. Let's talk about oxygen permeable pipes and how to identify if they're in your heating system. Welcome to Inspector Insights. This is part two of a three-part video series discussing radiant heating systems and how oxygen permeable pipe can cause your system to fail prematurely. Here's the one sentence recap from video one. Some homes had hydronic heating systems such as in-floor radiant heat or heated driveways that were installed with oxygen permeable pipe that allowed oxygen to diffuse into the closed loop hydronic system and cause the components of the system to rust away until nothing was left except for a prematurely failed system that needed replaced at great expense. There are many different types of pipes that have been used for hydronic systems, but currently the most popular type of pipe being installed is PEX. PEX is not a name brand, it's a descriptor for the type of plastic and its manufacturing process. PEX is short for cross-linked polyethylene, and there are several different types of PEX that have unique variations to their manufacturing process. To create the cross-linking for the polyethylene molecules, PEX-A uses a melting process, PEX-B uses a steam bath, and PEX-C uses an electron beam. There are pros and cons to each resulting type of PEX, and there are many different manufacturers that produce subtle variations. To confuse things even further, people will refer to the type of PEX by the manufacturer who produces it, such as Wearsbow. Wearsbow is well known for producing PEX-A, and their company name was often used as the preferred way to describe the type of pipe being used. Wearsbow made many other products, but to confuse things even further, Wearsbow is now Upinor. But you still hear people saying where's Bo on the job site, and to make things even worse, Upinor has a hydronic specific pipe that is branded with the where's Bo name. So instead of saying PEX A, PEX B, PEX C, where's Bo, Upinor, we're just going to say PEX from this point moving forward. Non-barrier PEX is used as an alternative to copper and CPVC rigid piping for residential and commercial potable and non-potable water plumbing. Non-barrier PEX has a high resistance to chlorine, which is why it's so frequently used for everyday hot and cold water supplies, which are known as open loop systems. These pipes can often be identified by their matte surface. Oxygen barrier PEX is the same as the previously listed PEX, but it has an oxygen barrier that prevents the diffusion of oxygen molecules into the water through the walls of the pipe. The layer is made of ethyl vinyl alcohol or EVOH, which is also found in food packaging to help retain freshness. This prevents the corrosion of cast iron components such as circulator pumps, air purgers, fill valves, boiler heating elements, and heat exchangers, just to name a few. This type of pipe is primarily used for hot water hydronic heating such as baseboard radiator heating, fan foils, radiant floor heating, and snow melting applications, which are known as closed loop systems. These pipes can often be identified by their glossy surface. If a PEX pipe has an oxygen barrier, it may also have DIN4726 printed on the pipe. PEX Aluminum PEX has an internal layer of aluminum sandwiched between two layers of PEX. The aluminum layer creates an oxygen diffusion barrier without the need for additional coatings. When the pipe is bent, the pipe will stay in that bent position, allowing one person to install the pipe more easily by themselves. The aluminum also increases the pressure rating for the PEX pipe. To help with the identification of plumbing pipes, PEX may be colored red for hot, blue for cold, or white for neutral. The color has no bearing on the performance of the pipe, but instead it is a personal preference by the plumber to choose what color to identify the plumbing with. The color orange is usually reserved for PEX aluminum PEX pipes. With all these different PEX pipe options, it's very possible that an installer may accidentally or intentionally install a non-barrier PEX pipe to try to save some money. If non-barrier PEX was accidentally installed, hopefully they also accidentally installed non-ferrous parts so they won't rust, but that seems a little unlikely. Sometimes when tens of thousands of feet of pipe in a house or a driveway are being installed, the installer may intentionally use non-barrier pipe to save the homeowner a significant amount of money, even when accounting for the added cost of non-ferrous materials such as stainless steel, copper, or brass. This type of installation is completely acceptable, but the homeowner needs to be aware that all future repairs must be done with non-ferrous materials. PEX is considered an appropriate pipe for hydronic systems, but there are several types of pipes that were used for hydronic systems that ended in a lawsuit and the banning of the product from use nationwide. One of the worst offenders was polybutylene. Polybutylene pipe was a gray plastic pipe used for domestic water and hydronic systems from 1978 to 1995. Poly-B didn't have any oxygen barrier for hydronic systems until later, but in the mid-1980s, the Poly-B pipes started to crack and leak. It was soon discovered that there were issues with the fittings and deterioration of the plastic pipe from heat and chlorine. Since hydronic systems create heat and drinking water can contain chlorine, the Poly-B hydronic systems could fail in as little as three years versus the typical 25-year life expectancy. 
In 1995, a class action lawsuit was filed, which settled for $950 million. A product that had a similarly poor track record was Entran 2. Entran 2 did not have an oxygen barrier, but Entran 3 did. However, oxygen permeability was the least important issue found with these types of pipes. Entran 2 was a rubber hose produced by the Goodyear Tire Company and was used for radiant in-floor heating and snow melt systems installed from 1989 to 1994. During this time, a plasticizer used to keep the rubber flexible would leach out of the rubber when exposed to heat and would cause the rubber to harden. This resulted in the failure of the system and damage to the house when the pipes would rupture and the liquid inside the pipes would seep into the walls and floors of the house. In 2004, Goodyear settled a class action lawsuit for a minimum of $196 million to a maximum of $236 million. Goodyear also had an improved product called Entran 3, which was used for radiant in-floor heating and snow melt systems installed from 1992 to 1996. Entran 3 has had many issues, but the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Colorado ruled in 2016 that a product is not considered defective if 10 years has passed since it was first sold. Even though that product had an expected useful life of greater than 40 years, was marketed and sold with that expectation, and the methods of installation made repair or replacement completely impractical, which are all things that Goodyear affirmed in court. But the court affirmed that the Entran 3 product was not defective and that Goodyear was not liable. As you can see, having the wrong type of pipe installed can easily lead to expensive lawsuits and prohibitively expensive remedies. So what's a homeowner to do? In the final part of this three-part video series, we'll be discussing some of the options for repair. If you have any questions or would like to schedule a home inspection, please visit twomoosehomeinspections.com. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.